Well, <laughs> I will just tell you what the policy is. Calculators are allowed. So, uh, oh, you know what? It might be in the syllabus. Um, <laughs> just last place I check and we'll just do this one so that I don't have to. Uh, so, allow the prohibit allow. Um, okay, so I think uh, here it is. So, allowed calculators and under prohibited, it says external websites, unless they are used purely for calculation function. So Ulfram Alpha using it for purely calculator or even Google using it purely as calculator is allowed. Um, that's always been the policy <laughs> and it's in the syllabus. All right, uh, let me start. Okay, um, it says work done on a crate, it pushed the four meters up along Okay, um, it exerts that force parallel to the ramp. That's good. Crane moves at constant speed. How much? Four mu ah, so four times 400, 1600 joules. So they gave us easy numbers because displacement and force are in the same direction. Um, Consider a shopping cart of them as rolling down that. Does that many joules of work? Oh, yeah, I don't think I need that. Oh uh, yeah, we can ignore friction. So, um, so we are using this expression for energy. Uh, one that says kinetic energy is equal to one half and b squared. And by telling us how much work gravitational force does, they've given us the kinetic energy. So uh, I just solve this for speed, v is equal to square root of two times kinetic energy divided by mass, and that's the answer. Let me just do that here. Um, square root of two times kinetic, the 25 joules, which will be the kinetic energy divided by 17 kilograms. Uh, right. uh, 1.71 1 meters per second, so that looks like this one. Um, a daredevil cyclist is approaching, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to erase this thing. Approaching a loop of that radius. Uh, what is the minimum speed of the cyclist in the attempt of the loop the loop maneuver? Um, <laughs> so this is a trick question. Uh, let me first uh, do the calculation pretending that I don't know the trick. And uh, actually, let me do this last because uh, that could spend some time. I'll come back to this. It's a trick question. Uh, I'll come back and to kind of simulate what someone might be doing as you go through that. Um, choose the statement which states the correct physics definition. Power is the rate of work done. Uh, mechanical energy, uh, it includes potential energy, so this is not, oh, correct. So that would be correct, let me just double check. Conservative force is not that. Kinetic energy is what? Um, so by the way, this is uh, dynamically generated which gives these nonsense choices from time to time. <laughs> For an object undergoing circular motion, centripetal force does not change kinetic energy. Oh, why? It, it, it's not. Um, it depends on what's providing the centripetal force. Um, doesn't keep all, yeah, this is the why. If it's a perpendicular to velocity, it's a perpendicular to instantaneous displacement. So it doesn't do work. Um, yeah, the rest is uh, nonsense. Consider situation below, two objects, same as uh, frictionless, moving at this speed, they collide, they stick together, speed up. Oh, uh, I think I've seen this situation enough to have an intuition. So um, this is the kind of collision that doesn't conserve kinetic energy, conserves momentum, and um, since the mass is doubling, that must mean the, and this at zero speed, this must, the speed is going to a half. So, and double checking all those things before I go to that answer, but it's a situation that's common enough that I can do it without writing down expressions. Consider two situations, one where a person is moving at that speed, oh, right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, collision, um, okay. So I guess here what I'm relying on is this uh, expression. Uh, 
So um, we have an expression for impulse, change in angular, change in momentum. And with all of that, we have this new definition of force. Force is defined as change in momentum divided by duration of time, assuming only one force acts on it, or this is the definition of net force. So um, if both cars were moving at, if they were both moving at 30 meters per second, same mass, then change in momentum is the same. What's the difference is, is a duration of time. So the amount of force will be different. Yeah. So that will be, the force is greater uh, in this case. And this is a nonsense uh, word salad. This is, now impulse is the same, change in momentum is the same, uh, but that doesn't decide what gets damaged. This is untrue. Um, yeah. So then, let me just check. All right, I gotta go faster. Uh, I'm just gonna work out the answer. So they give us the impulse. I'm gonna divide that by time to get us the force. Uh, choose the same. It correctly describes the total momentum of the genus when uh, it's conserved uh, when the net impulse due to external forces is zero uh, impulse due to net all right that, that too. <laughs> you can put net on either of the part uh, conservative force has nothing to do with it because that's about conservation of energy um, this is a little too strong uh, it's not the most correct because it's um, like internal forces are fine um, and this is again energy stuff. Uh, all right. Huh? Oh, oh, nice. It's the same setup as above, but they're asking different questions. Uh, some mass, frictionless, right? Um, at this speed, collide, stick together, move together as one piece. Okay. Um, in this, oh, so it's uh, inelastic. So oh, none of these say elastic. Um, all right, I gotta work out some energy. So initial kinetic energy was one half times the mass times uh, speed squared. That's 6.25, okay, so it's one of these two. Kinetic energy changes, ah. So after they collide, they're still moving. So the kinetic energy won't go to zero, it'll be this. All right, so I've, I think answered all about that one question that I'm telling you is a trick question. So let me just simulate what someone who didn't write the question and immediately recognized it as a trick question might go through. So, you know, I might, someone might go through this setup. Uh, so you're thinking, okay, uh, I have this thing moving here at some speed. This is my initial. And I'm thinking, hmm, the minimum speed I'm going to get, it will be here, moving at some speed of V min. And, um, and yeah, so I think I know the difference in the height, uh, roughly you know, five, twice that's uh, 10 meters. Um, so you might write down, okay, let's write down uh, conservation of energy, because I think energy is conserved, no friction or, you know, things like that. So say total initial energy is equal to the total final energy. Um, so I'm going to send my zero so that here it's potential energy is zero. So I'll have initial kinetic energy plus potential energy, which will be zero is equal to here. Um, I guess it, it depends on V mean. So it, it'll be minimum kinetic energy plus um, final uh, potential energy, which will be given through this expression. So let me just write things up. One half mv squared, I know v from here, 10 meters per second, is equal to one half mv mean squared plus mgh, and I have number for h. Oh, m's cancel out. So I can solve this for v mean, and I get uh, we mean is equal to this, you know, slow down, pause, <laughs> make sure I did the algebra correctly. Um, it's a V squared minus G H square root. It. Okay. And depending on what calculator you have, you'll get different answers here. Let me just do it on Sage Mess because since that's my calculator, V squared 10 squared minus 9.8 times 10. And um, 
wait that's not what i was expecting what did i do wrong um oh <laughs> i made an algebra mistake there's this two here when i multiply the through by two <laughs> yeah don't do everything in your head uh, so you get this answer depending on your calculator it might say it's uh, uh, imaginary or it might say something else and what it comes down to is that assumption that I made that this cyclist to reach that position is wrong. It's going to actually stop slow to zero around here and roll back down. So zero will be the maximum speed. It's a trick question designed to highlight uh, one of the weaknesses of the of conservation approach, which is that it, it ignores the time information, which is its strength in that um, you know, you, it, you can ignore some of the complexities in the question, but it's also its weakness in that if you didn't properly verify that the two snapshots are reachable, then you might end up with an imaginary result, in which case, you know, you have to just uh, kind of think through what it means and maybe double check some of your assumptions. Uh, so, so you, know, you don't have to know that that was a trick question to answer it, but it does take, you know, it, it took me going through all this, knowing the trouble I will uh, arrive at, it took me three minutes. So I can imagine someone <laughs> spending four or five minutes. So my number one advice with the questions like that is, first time you see it, um, skip it. Uh, make sure you answer the remainder of the set uh, first, and then come back to it. I think, uh, so I, I don't like tri trick questions. This is one of the few trick questions I've written, uh, which is how I remember immediately that that's a trick question, because <laughs> there's like only one or two of those. Uh, so I record myself. Um, 